Guys, I was curious about uh, this anti-commandeering doctrine that uh, Missouri is using to uh, stop the federal gun control laws. So I looked it up. This is from the Tenth Amendment Foundation Center. Tenth Amendment Center. Okay. Now, this is most Americans believe, you know, that the federal government stands absolutely supreme. Nobody can question its what it dictates. Uh, nobody can resist its command. This is simply not true. I'll put a link down here. Laws passed in pursuance to the Constitution do stand as the supreme law of the land, but that doesn't in any way imply that federal government uh, is lords over everything and everybody in America. Federal, federal power actually extends only to a few spheres of power in Congress. Most power and authority was left to the states and the people. Even if the federal government does exercise authority, it cannot force state or local governments to cooperate in enforcement or implementation. The Fed must exercise their authority on their own unless the state and local governments choose to assist. Simply put, the federal government cannot force state or local governments to act against their will. They can't make them do unconstitutional uh, duties or break any un uh, laws. Now, I'm going to zoom this in so you see where this is at here. Uh, okay. This is known as the anti-commandeering doctrine. It's well established in its constitutional force, in, in constitutional jurisprudence, uh, four Supreme Court opinions dating back to 1842 serve as the foundation for this legal doctrine. Now basically, you know, uh, they can't make you enforce uh, Obamacare or Medicare or any damn thing like that. I mean, they, can, they Congress can pass all the laws they want. The states don't have to follow suit. If they think something's wrong about it, they don't have to. The clause is found in the National Constitution and not in it's, it's, if any, wait a minute, back up. The fundamental principle applicable to all cases of this sort would seem to be that where the end is required, the means are given, and where the duty is enjoyed, the ability to perform it is contemplated to exist as part of the functionaries to whom it is entrusted. The clause found in the National Constitution and not in that of any state does not point out any state function or any state action to carry the provisions into effect. The states cannot, therefore, be compelled to enforce them, and it might be deemed as unconstitutional exercise of the power of interpretation to insist that the states are bound to provide means to carry into effect the duties of the national government, nowhere delegated or instructed to them by the Constitution. I'll go down here just a minute. While well, Congress has substantial powers to govern the nation directly, including in areas of intimate concerns to states, the Constitution was never understood to confer upon Congress the ability to require the states to govern according to Congress's instructions. O'Connor argued that the standing alone, both option offered to the state of New York for dealing with radioactive waste in the act of represented an unconstitutional overreach. Therefore, forcing the state to choose between two is also unconstitutional. You've got to read this, people. I'm, I'll put a link to it down here. Uh, I'll get down to the, a good part here. Uh, Madison's blueprint, supported by the anti-commandeering doctrine, provides a powerful tool that states can use to stop unconstitutional federal acts in their tracks. In fact, during the federal government shutdown, the National Association of Governors admitted states are partners with the federal government in implementing most federal programs. That means states can create implements to enforcing and implementing most federal programs. By simply refusing to provide 
materials to NSA spying, indefinite detentions, unconstitutional violations of the Second Amendment, and other unwarranted acts, states have the power to render these actions unenforceable. I won't get this in there so you see. Any kind of unconstitutional violations of the Second Amendment and other unwarranted acts, states have the power to render these actions unenforceable. In other words, they can nullify them. Even the Supreme Court agrees. I'll put a link to this, guys, because uh, it takes a while to get these things loaded anymore. I'll put a link to this. Check this thing out. This is what Missouri is using, people. This can be used in every single state. Now, if you guys are really wanting to keep your firearms, call the governor of Missouri. Tell him what a great job he's doing out there. Tell him to, tell him to sign Senate Bill 367 into law. His phone number is 573-751-3222. Missouri can be a model and a guide for these other states to put the federal government in its proper place. All Americans want to do in life is to be left alone, to be free. Now have searchlights and cameras on you at every uh, step of the way, um, doing unconstitutional background checks to see if you if you are able to uh, uh, have a firearm. Their firearm acts people are unconstitutional because they are outside the scope of their authority. It always has been. They never had the right to implement any kind of federal gun control law. Period. Now, from, uh, what, 1781 until 1934, 153 years, nobody passed any gun control laws. But they, used, they couldn't because they are constitutionally barred. What they did, they put it in this uh, Commerce Clause. And they've been pushing these unconstitutional laws down your throat for a long time. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.